Hello, I'm George Cole. Welcome to part two of Morning Light up in the Tetons, which is Wyoming. All right, um, today was Balance Day, so I really worked on how does one color relate to the surrounding colors? Is it too dull, too bright? And worked up a balance on that. I still needed contrast, and I have really strong contrast by introducing light up into the top of these mountains and some pinks. Um, so stay tuned for those mixtures. I also incorporated, incorporated some of those colors into the stream. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, so get outside and paint. Paint with your friends. Get critiques and don't be intimidated by a white canvas. All right, let's start painting. Hello and welcome to part two of uh, Sunrise. This is the Tetons in Wyoming and um, part two is going to be balance. Boy, yesterday we were kept pretty busy on this, uh, I don't know, 11 by 16. It was it's a lot of canvas in 30 minutes to cover, but we did it. And what I want to do today is keep playing on getting these shapes First of all, if they're in the right place, get those right. But balancing value colors, which I'll explain as we go through what a value color is, which is basically a, a color like red on a value scale, which is light and dark. Would this red be more toward the zero or more toward the 10 or somewhere in between? That's a value color. All right, pretty basic stuff there. Okay, let's start. I think the majority of the work is going to be down in here today. So I'm going to start with, uh, I think, probably something like a uh, 2025 Rosemary number 4. It's got some volume to it and we can get some work done. So I'm not doing like detail work, um, any significant detail work today. All right, let's get started with down in here and working, making sure the shapes are right. So let's make a blue and a transparent oxide red. I'm sorry, transparent oxide, yeah, transparent oxide brown and some viridian. So that's a nice dark. So we've got that off there. And let's make a silvery type green. So we're going to start with a dark gray and a light viridian. And I'm going to put some regular viridian in there to get some punch to it. Back to light viridian. And I think we can work with these things here. All right. Let's get hopping. I don't think I've made enough green. Let me make some greener stuff off to the side. Viridian. I'm going to add a light gray to this. I'm going to add more dark gray to this side. And if I need any rust, I'll be working with some transparent oxide red, some gray some gray. I can add a little green in there to kill it. Very good. So kind of a sultry green, so I'll be working in these bushes too. All right. That should keep me busy. All right, we have 26 minutes to go to balance this thing. So let's go with some, some darks here. And some good darks here. And work out these shapes a little bit more with some darks. You can see there's more definition and definement in here. 
And do I make those big or small? I think that's about the right size. I need some darks down in here. And in here. Soften the top. And let's go over to these bushes here. Man, I think I took that down too far. Sorry. And I'm going to make a correction right there with getting some lights right in here. I just went to the darker pile and I went in there to do that. I'll go with the slightly lighter stuff right in here. And Here. I'm going to go continue with dark and I'm going to be making some more blue, transparent oxide red, viridian, and I'm going to get some brown in there too. Blue, that was transparent oxide brown. and. I think I need to bring these bushes up into here. So I'm working a little bit in shapes and also in values. And I think I need more bank here. There. And here. And I need to take some darks down to the wada. And I'll get some darks on the edge. Maybe my water needs to come in a little bit here, looking at the reference. But I will do that when I get to be working on that particular thing later. And I think these could be darkened. Now I've got this rust color and I'm going to bring that in a little bit more subtly here and make a statement with that. Y'all keeping me busy here this morning. I'm going to clean some of that rust out of my, my brush here. And I'm going to go back to blue and yellow ochre, ultra blue. And I'm going to work on these trees to be bigger. Bigger. Yeah. I want them to be in perspective with the bushes. And they just seem too miniature for Wyoming pine trees. And I'm just going to have a lot more taller trees in this area here. And there's just going to be more trees in. I'm just Bob Rossing this. In other words, making some of this up. Right in there. All right, I see some of these bushes, these red bushes, over in this area. I'm looking at the 
photograph, and I'm going to put some of this way in the back, uh, putting this in to kind of describe something here with the rust. It has something to do with what's going on up front here. And of course I will get some dark underneath here. Good. I'm starting to fill in some spaces there and that looks good. So you can see some stuff's coming totally out of my head and the other stuff is coming from the from the photo reference. And all in all I'm trying to make a nice composition. Just using some of my darks again to tell a little bit more of the story here. Since I have a good pile of dark, which is quickly evaporating as I use it. All right. I'm going to use, I'm going to add some royal blue to my mixture and cobalt, oil blue, and light gray, maybe dark gray, sorry. Cobalt, boy this royal is not very strong. It's a weak pigment, at least the brand I have, not the not the thing overall, but just the brand I have. And I want to try to get my royal in here and I might take shave some off at the top of the bushes in various places like right in here and I've got to stay away from that rust color because it's such a contaminant it'll really spread like wildfire and I like this silvery stuff going on here and here and I get that with that cobalt and a little bit of royal. And it just really adds a nice touch to the painting. And filling in some edges here. See, I'm working on the big picture here, not the, not the detail stuff, but trying to get some good balance going here. So I will now lighten it up just a little bit with this lighter side here, this green we made to the side, and I'm going to get a little bit more detailed as much as I can with a big brush. There's a little bit of work here. And I want to get a little bit more of this light color right up on top. Because I see some of that in the reference, not a whole lot. Now I see some dead pine trees here. I don't know if I'll put them in. I really like this area here to look at instead of putting that you see it that in the reference a, a pine tree but uh, I'm gonna leave it out okay I think this is starting to look pretty darn good and if that's the case let's move up and work on the blues in here All right, what do we got time-wise? 16 minutes! My gosh, that's great. I can still use the same brush because I'm still going to be in the cool neighborhood. If I was switching over to the warms, I would change my brush. But not yet. I might yet have time to get up there. 
I don't think I need this rust around here. It's so strong. I'm going to make sure it's cleared out of the mixing neighborhood. And let's start thinking about an ultra blue. And a darker blue on this side. So we have a dark and we have a light. And a very dirty palette knife. Keep those palette knives clean because before you know it you'll get a dry paint on the bottom of them and they become really difficult to work with and you have to scrape it off with a razor blade. All right, let's see what I got here for a little bit more. I'm looking at brushes right now and I'm looking for something that's a little bit of a flat edge and I've got this little guy here. I don't even know the name of him. But I'm going to go in with this blue and make sure I get that on this side. It's a little dry. I mean, that's really dramatic over here. And if I make it too dark, I can always make it lighter. Now, do I need this anywhere else? And I think this comes out farther. I'm looking at the photo reference to make that determination. And I'm going to run some of it on the bottom. And I think I need some darks going up in a few places. And a few more in various places. Just looking at the reference, that's all. Whew. Oh, yeah. Now we need to go lighter, so I'm going to clean this in my Amsol, and I'm going to go with this lighter blue and see if I have the right mixture. I think I could go a little lighter. A little lighter. See what this does. I added some titanium white, and now we're going to. It just doesn't have the zinc. What's wrong with my my paint killer here? Come on. Well, I'm going to add some cobalt. See what that does. I need a, a little bit of a richer color. I wonder if I had some contamination in this brush. I don't know, but I'm going to try it now. Better, 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 better. And move this on across here. It's also a good time is your shadow up in here in the mountain to your satisfaction and I'll change that if needed and work on that just a little bit. I wonder if my green line is going uphill. It is. So what I'm going to do is bring the blue down just a little bit with the darker blue like that. I want that to be a little bit more level. Let me get back and take a level look. That's good. So now, let's look at shadows in the mountains. And work a little bit more of this stuff. It might be too bright, so I'll calm that down just a little bit. And here, I'm going to 
could have a lot of shadow. And run some up in here. Just to kind of make things connect. And I think there's something in here and here. I may have made that too dark. Yeah, darn it. Let me uh, calm that down. So I'm going to go to the lighter stuff. Calm it down. And calm it down. Okay. All right. Now with... This stuff working out and looking at my time, which is whew, nine minutes. Wow, things are going pretty, pretty well. Don't get your hopes up. Let's make sure we cover the bases. Okay, now I'm going to go to warms. I'm going to clean this palette. Move it over and. Keep my knives clean. Get my razor blade scraper and even clean this mixing area even better. So we're going to start with some very clean titanium white. We're going to go with a touch of Hansa. Hansa Yellow Deep, but boy, it's strong stuff, so be very careful with it. I'm going to add just a little bit more of Hansa. And on one side, I'm going to add some white and some transparent oxide brown. It's not very good, that was contaminated. Boy, that was too much! And on the other side, I'm going to put some alizarin and some white and some white. All right, I think this has to be even lighter. Okay. And let's mix some of this and this together. That is a nice color. That is nice. All right, let me get something a little smaller, a little nicer. And I don't think I need to go that small, but I'm going to use a little bit softer brush, a 279 number four rosemary. It's a which I like. Ooh, that's a nice, that's a nice bright red, isn't it? Oh, that's nice. Let's try some of these, uh, we'll get some of the pink into the, and brown into the yellow. And see what we can do here with Nice. It's a, so beautiful. Now I'm going to put more yellow in a few places. Boom. Boom, boom. And back to pink. To give it that morning glow. So I'm using the pink more on the bottom and more of the tan and the yellow up on top.
Oh boy, this is fun. It's so pretty. Kind of why I'm an artist. Just create pretty things. Now, I'm going to go with some darker alizarin with some darker worms, which was the transparent oxide red. And I'm going to put some of that down on the lower side here. So I'm running some down, I'm leaving some up, and then I'm going to dry my brush and soften some of these hard strokes I put in down below here. Okay, let me get back. I think what I'll do here is see what I can do about getting some effect here of tree trunks. And I can cover them later. I think I have to decide what's going on here. I I recall that I scrubbed out some of that yesterday. I'm going to retire my soft brush here. I wonder if I put a little bit more yellow, this is cad yellow medium, in here before I retire this brush and see what this does. You can see it's, it's still got some residue left over from the pinks and everything I had underneath it. But I think, all in all, it can benefit by a few strokes of the, this mixture we're having here. See just a few splotches of blue in here kind of tells you where the edge is. Sometimes you just need a few reminders to your viewer of what they should be looking at. All right, I want to look in here now and make some changes. This is kind of undone. I can do some more work on balance, color balance in there. All right, I'm busy cleaning my soft brush here. And I'll go back to a number 42025. I've got some my silvery green left. And let me make a cut into here. And make this Come to more of an abrupt end here. And top off him just a little bit. I don't know if I'm helping this or hurting it. Let me see. Oh, I think that's okay. Let me take this down a little bit more. I'm working over some of that rust and it's really dangerous stuff to contaminate with. So I'm going to start up here and just run these guys in here. And that should do, do that pretty good. <laughs> now I have some dark here. And let me see what I can do with some, maybe a big tree right in here. And I'm going to maybe bring a dark down here because he's dark. Just to connect some darks. Boy. I'm 
trying to finish off the edge of my some of my edges here. And let me um, I've got some of this pink stuff here from up there, and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to get some of my blues in here also. Oh, there's my timer. That's it. Thanks everybody for part two. And if you have time, keep working in this area to balance out your colors. And then tomorrow, we'll finish this painting, hopefully, in part three. But so far, I think we've got a nice layout. All right. Bye-bye.